Welcome to Inside the Fusee. Uh, I'm going to do another episode of this. Well, we've got this little clock here. Just some observations before we start taking it apart is that we seem to have um, a balance wheel which is uh, not balancing. <laughs> and if you examine this, it doesn't look broken and the jewel looks okay. This looks a bit too high. So I need to investigate what's going on there. It does look as if it's been properly pinned the watch, so I don't think it's that. And there's a couple of other things we need to look at. This particular watch though, it does have a fusee chain. So this, this particular demo will feature removing that fusee chain. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these pieces off here. This is the, uh, the catch which um, attaches the watch into the case. And that's the hinge which there's like a little pin in it which you put through that f allows the the movement to hinge onto the case we're not going to take this off because there's a special technique for taking the fusee off without breaking it and that is something you wouldn't do just yet so the third wheel will probably come off when we do the fusee which, which is a bit later on the face of this watch appears to have been ripped off so you'll see just here mm -hmm. Um, I see you see that moving around there. That's one of the mounts for the face, which is ripped off. So, also one of the things we need to do is just take the pin out of that. So, firstly, I'm going to lift off the balance wheel mechanism. And it's got rather a large screw on it, which makes me wonder whether that's the original screw, or whether this is even the original top for it. But uh, anyway, it is superbly ornate. There you go. Look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> well, that's what they did with watches in those days. So this should come off fairly easily, mainly because I've had it off before. <laughs> so you can see that lifts away. And uh, but when you look at the side profile of this, this little top here isn't actually touching this when it's down. So there's something going on there. I'm not quite sure what it is. So if I examine this with the lupe. Uh, the jewel on this that has been smashed and you can also see just here where one of the balance wheel arms has got a big dent in it so I think we probably know what happened here then <laughs> okay as with a lot of these watches uh, the spring is connected here just where the tweezer is with a little pin and you have to remove that to get the spring loose when there's no sort of bridge arm there. Now fortunately in most cases it does come away pretty easily and there's about five mil of spring on one side of it and the other part goes over the the hook on the adjustment arm. So I'm just going to take that off but really carefully because I don't want to muck up the spring. So that should come free now and it does and it looks pretty intact on the other side too it's got a good jewel going on there so we'll have to find out what's going on with that then ok now the balance arm is off we should be able to get this old display pin off ok this is the spring loaded catch for the watch case so loosen off one end of the spring so it doesn't actually come loose and then use this kind of looseness of it to get it away a bit ok that should catch spring off that's the catch itself off so the other side we've got to keep the hinge which still has the pin in it pins for the case here and also here which are holding the case together at an exact distance ok so so far you haven't looked at the, the rest of the clock and it may not be necessary to do so because essentially we have this um, rather ornate bridging piece here which has um, a cracked jewel cup um, which just needs replacing I think the arm here 
one of these is dinked the jewel's intact and the spring's pretty good the bottom part of the, I think that's the staff it's called the bottom part of the staff's pretty good but the top of that looks like it's damaged and that's probably why it's not reaching the top of the bridge uh, so the evidence is suggesting so far that there's probably very little wrong with the rest of the mechanism what's probably happened here is that it's had a bang okay so in this little section I'm going to focus on removing the third wheel and then discharging the fuse E and this is the method that uh, I kind of learned from Richard Perret whose videos I have been watching so there you go school of YouTube <laughs> that's not quite wide enough Well, looks like that hasn't been off for a while. So, I'm going to gently tease this just to make it come away. The object of this exercise is to remove the third wheel and then hopefully when it's removed we should be able to discharge the fusee. And you can see there's a bit of tension on that. So there you go. So I then allow that to unwind and you can just see the way it's forcing itself to unwind there. At the moment this clock has an intact fusee chain which I am trying not to break and I don't know how long it takes to unwind this. What happens though is that um, people who are using these watches the watch stops working and then what they're automatically what they do of course is they go in there and they um, there you go it's, that's it unwound completely they go in there and they um, wind it up so when you get them and they're broken they're usually fully wound on okay so that is now done it's fully unwound and this was a number five once the third wheel has unwound the watch uh, it's, it's best to release anything else left on the spring by removing this. This is like the the slack winding cock if you like. Uh, I don't know what the full name for it is but um, that's what you do anyway. And then the watch can be dismantled uh, from the top. And that flicks out of the way. And it's not the first time I've had that happen. <laughs> so now this cog which is um, only held on by kind of friction really can be removed um, once that's been done I turn the watch the correct way up again you can see here there's um, pins that have been shortened so that the, uh, the balance bridge can go over and there's another one there and there's another one there and they've got to be taken out so that uh, you can lift this off and there's a little bridge here that goes over the uh, the spring barrel um, which can now be lifted off so it's mainly at the areas around where the pin is like there that's too dark you can see the areas around where the pin is which is around out here that you need to loosen. The other bits usually just come away. Sometimes they're screwed down a little bit more, but okay, that's the barrel bridge and two screws for it. Now you should know that the fusey cone is still attached and it looks like I've missed a little piece here which I'll have to work out what to do with. There you go. So that's the cone away. And there you go, that's the cone assembly.
And it looks like it goes around the top there. Now that the fusey cone is away, um, this barrel should lift off. In theory. <laughs> Yep, and there it does, come straight off. So there's a little fork on there and the watch has no jewels on that section. I think that's called the escape wheel. This is pressed on with a friction fit. I believe that's what happens with these. So that's not just going to lift off. Once the um, the fusy cock has been removed from the other side of the plate, which is the bit that I forgot to do. <laughs> Fusy chain can now be removed from the fusy cone. This piece here is the overwind mechanism. Uh, sorry, the fusy chain forces that onto this, which stops the overwind. Okay, so the fusy chain is buried in a very wafer thin slot, and it, it is literally just on a pin. And it comes out a little hook on one end. And so we have this uh, hooked chain, which is uh, very interesting, I have to say. So, we'll knock this pin out now and take this overwind spring off. So you need to watch that because the overwind spring, there you go, a bit of blued steel there, is actually held by this little spring here and it will go flying probably I should take that off first really but uh, okay this is the last part this holds a jewel for the balance wheel so we'll have a quick look at that that jewel there's my lupe there my jewel is uh, intact that takes the um, the adjustment arm off okay so if we take the top off the barrel there I don't really need to show you this, but um, what I will do, just, just, to, just to show you there. There's no brakes in the spring, so it looks okay. So that is this watch now, it's dismantled. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much for watching, folks. Bye.